Parents tried to reschedule my wedding for my brother's trip but I refused, now everyone is mad at me. I'm 28F, work a normal 9 to 5 job, and live pretty independently. I've been with my fiancé, Aaron, for over 4 years, and we've been engaged for about a year now. We're finally planning our wedding, something I've been dreaming of. I've put so much thought into every little detail, and for the last 4 months, I've been working my butt off to make sure everything is perfect. We've sent out the invitations, set the date, and all our loved ones are supposed to be there. Well, that was the plan, anyway. My parents, Brandon and Daisy, are an interesting duo. My dad is 58 and works at a construction company. He's always been more of the quiet, go-with-the-flow type. My mom, Daisy, is 55 and has been a stay-at-home mom for as long as I can remember. They've always had a soft spot for my older brother, Fred, who's 32. Actually, soft spot might be an understatement, he's definitely their favorite. The golden child, if you will. Fred is a bit of a character. He's always been ambitious, I'll give him that, but none of his business ventures ever really pan out. He's had multiple failed startups and seems to live in this fantasy world where the next big idea will finally make him rich. He's married to Alice, who's 30, and they have two kids, Ethan, who's 5, and Jenna, who's 3. Now, I don't have anything against them personally, but it's no secret that they live way beyond their means. My parents are constantly bailing them out, and it's gotten to the point where it's just expected. Fred and his family basically live off my parents' support, while I've always been the one who's had to fend for herself. When Aaron proposed to me, I couldn't wait to tell my family, even though I knew there'd be some drama, especially where Fred was concerned. But I tried to stay positive. I remember the day we announced our engagement. We had a small get-together at our place, just close family and friends. I was so excited to share the news, and for a brief moment, it felt like maybe, my parents would be happy for me and not just focus on Fred. But of course, Fred and Alice managed to steal the spotlight. Right in the middle of our announcement, Fred starts talking about how he's considering launching a new business and that they're thinking of moving to a bigger house. The whole conversation shifted from our engagement to Fred's latest plans. It was frustrating, to say the least, but I didn't want to make a scene. I just swallowed my pride and let it slide. Aaron noticed, though, and later that night, he told me he was proud of how I handled it. That meant a lot to me. Setting the date was another ordeal. We picked a date four months out, giving everyone plenty of time to plan. I even checked in with my parents before finalizing it to make sure they didn't have any conflicts. They assured me they'd be there, no problem. I thought that was the end of it, but I should have known better. I went all out on the details. We chose a beautiful venue, picked out flowers, and found the perfect dress. Everything was falling into place, and I was getting more and more excited. This was supposed to be our day, a celebration of our love surrounded by the people who matter most to us. I even included Fred and Alice in the wedding party, hoping it would help smooth over any potential issues. But deep down, I knew there was a storm brewing. And that storm hit when my parents called me out of the blue with an urgent request. They needed to talk about the wedding, and it didn't sound good. A few weeks ago, my parents suddenly made plans with Fred and his family to go on a vacation. I was confused at first because I thought they were talking about a trip after the wedding. But no, they meant the same week as my wedding. They wanted to know if I could possibly move the date of my wedding because it conflicted with their vacation plans. I was stunned. I mean, I'd planned this wedding for months, sent out invitations, booked everything, the venue, the caterers. And now they were asking me to change the date as if it was just some casual dinner party? My wedding day, the day that was supposed to be about Aaron and me, was suddenly less important than a last-minute vacation with Fred and his family. I tried to stay calm, but I was furious. I asked them why they would plan a vacation so close to the wedding date we'd already set. My mom's response? Well, you know how busy Fred's schedule is, and this was the only time they could all go together. I couldn't believe it. They were prioritizing Fred's vacation over my wedding. I told them that changing the date wasn't an option. Everything was already set, and there was no way I was going to move it just to accommodate Fred's vacation. My dad tried to play peacemaker, suggesting that maybe I could at least talk to the venue and see if they could switch dates, but I shut that down immediately. The date was set, and that was final. When I refused to change the date, my mom got upset and said I was being unreasonable. She went on about how family should come first and how I was making it difficult for everyone by being so rigid. She even accused me of trying to sabotage their relationship with Fred and his family. That really hurt, but I stood my ground. I told them I wasn't going to change the date, and if they couldn't make it, that was on them. They were silent for a moment, and then my mom said they'd have to think about it. They hung up without even saying goodbye. I couldn't believe my own parents were actually considering not coming to my wedding because of a vacation. Aaron was furious on my behalf and urged me to call them back and try to work things out. So, I did. I called them, hoping we could find some middle ground, but it didn't go as planned. I tried to explain how much this wedding meant to me, how long I'd been planning it, and how hurtful it was that they were even suggesting I move the date. But they were stubborn. My mom kept insisting that I was being unreasonable, and my dad kept saying that Fred's family had already booked everything, 
completely ignoring the fact I had booked everything in advance too, and it would be hard for them to change their plans. It was like talking to a brick wall. At that point, I knew I needed to involve the extended family. I reached out to my aunt, who I'm pretty close to, and explained the situation. She was just as shocked as I was and promised to talk to my parents. I hoped that maybe, hearing it from someone else would make them see how ridiculous they were being. But instead of backing down, my parents doubled down. They started calling other family members, trying to paint me as the unreasonable one. They said I was refusing to compromise and making things difficult for everyone. They even hinted that I was jealous of Fred and trying to punish him by not moving the wedding date. It was complete nonsense, but some of the family started to take their side, saying that I should be more flexible and considerate of Fred's family. It became clear that they were trying to manipulate me into giving in. They were using guilt and family pressure to try and force me to change the date. But I wasn't going to let them win. I had every right to have my wedding on the date I'd chosen, and I wasn't about to let them ruin it just to cater to Fred. So, I told them that the date was set, and if they couldn't make it, then that was their decision. But I wasn't going to change it. And that was final. So, Reddit, am I the asshole for not changing the date of my wedding because of their golden child's vacation? After posting my story here, I received an overwhelming amount of support and advice, and I'm really grateful to everyone who took the time to respond. Reading through the comments, a lot of people suggested that there might be more to my parents' sudden vacation plans than they were letting on. It got me thinking, so I decided to do some digging. I started by talking to my aunt again, who's always been more like a second mom to me. She knows how my parents are with Fred, so she wasn't surprised by what was happening. But when I mentioned the vacation, she got really quiet. After a moment, she admitted that she'd heard Fred was having some serious financial problems again. Apparently, his latest business venture had flopped, and he was in debt. My parents had been helping him out, again, but it wasn't enough. Fred was desperate and looking for a way to keep his head above water. It turns out, the vacation was actually a cover story. My parents were planning to take Fred and his family to Europe, but not for a leisurely getaway. They were going to meet with some potential investors Fred had found overseas. The whole trip was a last-ditch effort to get someone to invest in Fred's business before he lost everything. They were banking on this trip to save Fred's financial situation, and that's why they were so insistent on going. I was furious when I found out. It wasn't just about the vacation, it was about my parents once again prioritizing Fred over everything else, including my wedding. They were willing to miss my big day to try and bail Fred out of another mess he'd gotten himself into. After learning the truth, I knew I had to confront Fred. I called him up and asked if we could meet. I didn't tell him what it was about because I didn't want to give him time to prepare some excuse. When we met up, I went straight to the point. I told him I knew about the trip, the investors, and his financial troubles. At first, he tried to play it off, saying it was just a business opportunity that happened to coincide with the wedding date. But I wasn't buying it. He got defensive and said I didn't understand how much pressure he was under, how he was doing everything he could to provide for his family. I reminded him that this wasn't the first time he'd gotten himself into a financial hole and that our parents had been bailing him out for years. Fred finally admitted that things were bad. His business was on the brink of bankruptcy, and if this investor deal didn't work out, he'd lose everything. But instead of taking responsibility, he tried to guilt trip me. He said that as his sister, I should want to help him in any way I could, even if that meant moving my wedding date. He accused me of being selfish and not caring about his family. That was the last straw. I told him that I'd supported him as much as I could over the years, but I wasn't going to sacrifice my wedding day for his poor decisions. I made it clear that I wasn't going to change the date, and if he couldn't be there, that was his choice. I left him sitting there. After the confrontation with Fred, I decided to reach out to Alice. I wasn't sure how much she knew about everything, and I wanted to hear her side of the story. We met for coffee, and I could tell she was nervous as soon as we sat down. She probably knew I wasn't there to chat about wedding plans. I asked her straight up how much she knew about Fred's situation and the Europe trip. She admitted that she was aware of the financial issues but didn't know all the details. Fred had kept a lot of it from her to protect her, but she knew things were bad. When I told her about the real reason behind the trip, she looked shocked. She had no idea that my parents were planning to use the trip to try and secure investors for Fred's business. Alice confessed that she'd been worried about Fred's spending habits for a while, but every time she brought it up. She also admitted that she wasn't thrilled about missing the wedding, but Fred had convinced her that this trip was crucial for their future. She looked genuinely upset when I explained how much this was hurting me and how it was causing a huge rift in the family. I could see that Alice was caught in a tough spot. She wanted to support her husband, but she also didn't want to be the reason my parents missed my wedding. She promised to talk to Fred and see if they could figure out another way to handle the situation, but I wasn't holding my breath. Fred is nothing if not stubborn. I left the meeting feeling a little better knowing that Alice wasn't completely on board with this plan. But I also knew that, in the end, Fred was likely to do whatever he thought was best for him, regardless of how it affected the rest of us. With everything that had happened, I realized that the only way to resolve this was to get the whole family together and lay everything out on the table. I wasn't sure how it would go, 
but I knew that if we didn't address this head on, it would only get worse. So, I called a family meeting. I told my parents, Fred, and Alice that we needed to talk, no excuses, no postponing. We decided to meet at my parents' house. Aaron came with me for support, and I was glad to have him by my side. My parents were already there, and you could tell they were nervous. Fred and Alice arrived shortly after, with Fred looking defensive from the start. We all sat down in the living room, and I wasted no time. I started by telling them that I knew about Fred's financial troubles and the real reason behind the Europe trip. My parents looked shocked. Fred, on the other hand, tried to act like it wasn't a big deal, but I wasn't having it. I didn't hold back. I laid everything out, the years of favoritism, the endless bailouts, and how this was just the latest example of them prioritizing Fred over me. I told them that I understood they wanted to help Fred, but there had to be a line, and this was it. I explained how much this wedding meant to me, how much work I'd put into planning it, and how devastated I was that they were willing to throw it all away for a trip. Then, I pulled out the evidence I'd gathered. I had copies of emails and messages between Fred and my parents discussing the trip, the investors, and how they needed to keep it quiet, I just remembered a few passwords that's all. I even had a copy of the itinerary showing that the trip was scheduled during my wedding week. My parents looked like they wanted to crawl under the couch, and Fred was furious that I'd gone behind his back to get this information. I didn't care. I wasn't going to let them continue to manipulate me or make me feel guilty for wanting to have my wedding as planned. I also revealed that Alice wasn't fully on board with the trip, which seemed to catch Fred off guard. He turned to her, but she just looked away, confirming what I'd said. Fred started yelling, accusing me of trying to ruin his life and saying that I was just jealous because he was the successful one in the family. My mom started crying, saying that she just wanted to help both of her children and didn't want to have to choose between us. My dad was silent, which honestly made me even angrier. He'd always been the one to stay out of the drama, but this time, I needed him to take a stand. Alice finally spoke up and said that she wasn't comfortable with the idea of missing the wedding, especially now that she knew the full story. She said that they needed to find another way to deal with Fred's business problems that didn't involve sacrificing family events. Fred looked like he wanted to argue, but Alice stood her ground. I actually felt a bit of respect for her in that moment. But I wasn't done yet. I told them that they needed to make a decision, either they prioritized this trip and missed my wedding, or they found another way to help Fred that didn't involve abandoning me. I made it clear that I wasn't going to change the date, and if they couldn't accept that, then they were making their choice clear. I gave them 24 hours to decide. I told them that if they didn't choose to come to the wedding, I would cut ties with them. I wasn't going to let them continue to treat me like I didn't matter, and I wasn't going to let them ruin my wedding day. I even hinted that if they forced me to, I'd go public with the whole story. The last thing Fred needed was for his potential investors to find out about his financial mess, and I knew that was my trump card. My parents looked like they'd been hit by a truck, and Fred was angry. Alice just looked sad. I didn't want to do this, but I was tired of being pushed around, tired of always coming second to Fred's needs. I stood up, told them they knew how to reach me, and walked out with Aaron. Since that meeting, things have been hard. I haven't heard from my parents or Fred, and I'm not sure what they're going to decide. So now, I'm just waiting. Waiting to see if my parents will finally put me first or if this is the end of our relationship as I know it. Update 3, after what felt like an eternity, my parents finally reached out. It was the longest 24 hours of my life, and I couldn't focus on anything else while I waited for their decision. When my phone rang, I had no idea what they were going to say, and part of me didn't want to hear it. My mom started off by apologizing. She said that after our last conversation, they'd done a lot of thinking. They realized how much this wedding meant to me and how unfair they'd been by asking me to move the date. She admitted that they'd been too focused on trying to save Fred from his latest mess and hadn't considered how much they were hurting me in the process. Then she told me that they had decided to cancel the Europe trip. They were going to attend the wedding after all. I was shocked. I had prepared myself for the worst, convinced that they'd choose Fred over me again. Hearing them choose my wedding over the trip was a huge relief. My dad got on the phone next and confirmed what my mom had said. He apologized for not stepping up sooner and promised that they'd be there for me on my big day. He also mentioned that they were starting to realize how much they'd let Fred's issues affect the family and that they needed to re-evaluate how they'd been handling things. It wasn't exactly the heartfelt apology I'd been hoping for, but it was a start. They were coming to the wedding, and that was what mattered most. I thanked them for their decision, and we ended the call on a surprisingly positive note. For the first time in a long time, it felt like maybe things could get better between us. With the decision made, my parents immediately began cancelling the Europe trip. They told Fred that the trip was off, which, as you can imagine, didn't go over well. Fred was furious. He called me almost immediately, demanding to know what I'd said to our parents to make them cancel the trip. I told him that I'd simply told them the truth, that their attendance at my wedding meant more to me than anything else, and that they had to choose what was more important. Fred accused me of manipulating them, claiming that I was just trying to ruin his chances of turning his business around. He even suggested that I was trying to sabotage his life out of jealousy. It was the same old song and dance I'd heard from him a million times before. 
But this time, I didn't let it get to me. I calmly told him that I wasn't responsible for his problems and that our parents had made their own decision. If he wanted to be mad at someone, he could be mad at them, not me. After that, Fred hung up on me, and I didn't hear from him for a while. I was worried about how this would affect the wedding day, but I was also relieved that my parents were finally starting to see the bigger picture. They'd chosen to be there for me, and that was a step in the right direction. In the days that followed, my parents started to take a hard look at their relationship with Fred and me. My mom called me a few times to check in, and during one of those calls, she confessed that she and my dad had been talking a lot about how they'd treated us growing up. She admitted that they'd always seen Fred as the one who needed more help and attention because of his struggles, but in doing so, they'd neglected my needs and taken my independence for granted. She told me that they were beginning to realize just how much they'd hurt me over the years by always putting Fred first. My dad was the one who brought it up, apparently, saying that they needed to make more of an effort to support me and Aaron, not just when things were bad, but all the time. It wasn't a complete 180, but it was the first time I'd ever heard them acknowledge their favoritism so openly. They promised to work on being more present in my life and on treating both of their children equally. It was a lot to take in, and I wasn't sure how much of it would actually stick, but it was a start. I could tell they were sincere, and that gave me hope that maybe our relationship could improve moving forward. As for Fred, he was still angry, but my parents seemed determined not to let that dictate their actions anymore. They were starting to see that constantly bailing him out wasn't helping anyone, not him, not them, and certainly not our family as a whole. They even hinted that they might start setting some boundaries with him, which was something I never thought I'd hear. Of course, Fred didn't take any of this lying down. When he realized that my parents were serious about canceling the trip and coming to the wedding, he ramped up his efforts to get them back on his side. He started making all sorts of threats, including the possibility of taking legal action against our parents if they didn't follow through with the trip. He claimed they'd promised to help him with his business, and if they didn't, he'd have no choice but to sue them for breach of contract. It was an empty threat, and I think deep down, Fred knew it. But it showed just how desperate he was to get their support. My parents didn't back down. They told him that their decision was final and that he needed to figure out his own problems without relying on them so much. This was a huge step for them, and while it was hard for them to stand up to Fred, they knew it was necessary. Fred didn't stop there, though. He started reaching out to other family members, trying to get them on his side. He painted me as the villain, claiming that I'd manipulated our parents into cancelling the trip just to sabotage him. It caused some tension within the extended family, with a few relatives buying into Fred's narrative. But most of them saw through it and supported my parents' decision to prioritize my wedding. Despite his best efforts, Fred's manipulation tactics weren't as effective as they used to be. It seemed like people were finally starting to see him for who he really was, a person who was constantly looking for a handout rather than taking responsibility for his own actions. As a result of all this drama, there's definitely a divide forming within the family. Some of our relatives are firmly on Fred's side, believing that our parents should have kept their promise to help him, no matter what. They see me as the spoiled younger sister who's using her wedding to drive a wedge between the family. But others, especially those who've seen how Fred's behavior has affected my parents over the years, are supportive of their decision to attend the wedding and start setting boundaries with him. Family gatherings are more tense now, with people quietly taking sides. I can feel the judgment from those who think I'm in the wrong, but I'm trying not to let it get to me. Aaron has been great about helping me stay focused on the positives, like the fact that we're still moving forward with our wedding plans and that my parents will be there to support us. It's not easy, though. I worry about how this will affect our family in the long run. Will this rift ever heal, or will it continue to grow until it's too wide to bridge? I don't have the answers, but I know that I have to stand firm in my decisions. I can't keep bending over backward to accommodate everyone else, especially when it means sacrificing my own happiness. As for Fred, I don't know what the future holds for him. He's still trying to find a way to save his business, but without our parents' financial backing, it's going to be an uphill battle. In the meantime, Aaron and I are focusing on our wedding and the life we're building together. It's been not an easy road, but still I'm hopeful that the changes happening in my family will lead to a healthier, more balanced relationship for all of us in the long run. Update 4, the day of the wedding finally arrived, and despite all the drama leading up to it, I wanted this day to be perfect. Aaron and I had worked so hard to make it special, and I just wanted everything to go smoothly. My maid of honor, Nancy, who's been my best friend since college, kept reminding me that today was about Aaron and me, and nothing else mattered. We got ready at the venue, a beautiful garden estate that Aaron and I had fallen in love with the moment we saw it. I knew my parents were coming, but I hadn't spoken to Fred since our last conversation. I wasn't sure if he'd show up or not, and the thought of a potential confrontation was weighing on me. The ceremony was beautiful, and as we exchanged our vows, I felt like the luckiest person in the world. My parents were sitting in the front row, and when I glanced over at them, I could see my mom wiping away tears. It was a small, but significant moment that made me feel like maybe we were on the right track after all. The ceremony itself was everything I'd hoped for. We kept it intimate, with just close family and friends, and the officiant did a wonderful job of making it feel personal and heartfelt. 
After the ceremony, we took photos in the garden. The light was perfect, and the setting was just magical. My parents joined us for some of the family shots, and while things were still a bit awkward, it was clear they were genuinely happy for us. I could tell they were trying, and that meant a lot to me. When it came time for the reception. The speeches were touching, my dad even surprised me by giving a heartfelt toast where he apologized for the recent tension and expressed how proud he was of the woman I'd become. It was a big step for him, and while it didn't erase everything that had happened, it felt like a new beginning. Just when I thought the day was going off without a hitch, Fred and Alice showed up. They hadn't RSVP'd, so I wasn't sure if they were going to come at all. They walked in during the middle of the reception, and for a moment, the room went quiet. Fred looked like he had something to prove. He walked up to our parents first, had a quick, whispered conversation with them, and then made his way over to Aaron and me. Alice hung back, looking uncomfortable. When Fred reached us, he congratulated us, but it was clear he wasn't really there to celebrate. He was there to make a statement. He tried to start a conversation about his business troubles, right there in the middle of our wedding reception. It was like he couldn't stand not being the center of attention, even on my wedding day. Aaron stepped in before I could say anything. He calmly told Fred that this wasn't the time or place to discuss business, and that today was about celebrating our marriage. Fred didn't take it well. He tried to argue, but Aaron wasn't having it. Eventually, Fred gave up and walked away, but the damage was done. I tried my best to push it aside and enjoy the rest of the evening. We danced, cut the cake, and spent time with our friends and family. Despite Fred's attempt to cause drama, the night ended on a high note. I was officially married to the love of my life and nothing Fred did could take that away from me. As for Fred, his life has taken a significant turn. After the wedding, my parents made a difficult decision, they decided to withdraw their financial support. They realized that constantly bailing him out wasn't doing him any favors and that it was time for him to face the consequences of his actions. Without our parents' help, Fred's business quickly went under. He tried to find other investors, but without the trip to Europe, those deals fell through. Eventually, he had to file for bankruptcy. It was a hard pill for him to swallow, and his pride took a huge hit. Alice, who had been growing increasingly frustrated with Fred's financial recklessness, finally reached her breaking point. She took the kids and left him, moving in with her parents while she figured out her next steps. Fred is now facing the reality of being alone and having to rebuild his life from scratch. While I don't take pleasure in his downfall, I do think this is the wake-up call he needed. Maybe now he'll start taking responsibility for his own life instead of relying on everyone else to fix his problems. Only time will tell. As for Aaron and me, we're finally able to focus on our future without all the family drama. We're planning to start a family soon. We've also booked a European honeymoon, which we had to postpone because of all the wedding drama. It feels like the perfect way to celebrate this new chapter in our lives. I want to take a moment to thank everyone on Reddit who offered advice and support during this crazy journey. Your words gave me the strength to stand up for myself and make some tough decisions that I might have otherwise backed down from. It wasn't easy, but I'm so glad I stuck to my guns.